Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you that are new here, I'm Becca, I'm a professional pet portrait and wildlife artist specialising in realistic coloured pencil drawings of animals. So we've been working through this badger tutorial. Um, in part one in the previous part, I basically had all my initial outlines and I used um, some pan pastels just to get that base layer down and create that soft sort of initial um, stage before we start drawing on the drafting film. So I've got my drafting film here, which I've layered over the top of it. I've cut it out to scale so it should fit perfectly over the top of my work so far. Just make sure it's aligned up at the edges. And then just tape that in place to my drawing board. Like so. So if you are used to working on drafting film, then you might just want to skip the next minute or so. Um, but basically it's obviously the first thing is it's see-through, it's transparent, so you can see things that are layered underneath it. I like to use the one that's matte on both sides, which means you can work on either the front or the back. Um, I think that's better because they also do one that's like matte on one side and shiny on the other side, but you can't really draw on the shiny side. I've also left the link to the exact drafting film that I use in the video description below. It's very kind of flimsy, so I would always use like paper behind it, um, like we've done here. But basically, if you can tell from the camera, it's got no tooth whatsoever, unlike usual papers that have that really fine grain to them. This has literally no tooth whatsoever. It feels like tracing paper, but like a really good quality one. Um, so drawing on it is a completely different, like it just feels so much different than drawing on normal paper, but it allows you to get such intricate detail that you can't necessarily achieve with other papers, I don't think. I think if you want in detail and you really want to elevate that realistic element in your work, then do give drafting film a try. I started using it about a year and a half ago and I absolutely love it. It took me a few drawings to kind of get used to it and kind of get used to, you know, how much pressure to apply in comparison with other papers because they just don't really work the same. Um, but once I kind of got to grips with it, I absolutely love it. So we're going to be working on drafting film for this tutorial. And basically with drafting film, another thing to mention is because it's got no tooth because it's got no grain there's nothing to really work into or like squash down like we would do with other papers so you don't really at any point need to apply a hard pressure you want to keep everything super delicate i think you want to keep your pencils quite sharp for the majority of the tutorial as well um and yeah we'll just we'll get stuck in and i'll kind of talk you through it as we're going along so because we can see those initial outlines and shapes underneath, that's going to really make it easier for us. So I'm going to start by going in with the dark sepia and just go over those initial outlines. I'm going to start with the eyes. I always like to start with eyes with any portrait because I think once you've got the eyes done, everything else just seems to fall into place. And I love drawing eyes in general anyway, I think the best part of the portrait to draw. So I'm literally just letting it brush across the surface. I'm not applying any pressure at all, really. So I'm drawing around these highlighted reflections in the eyes as well. Gonna just lightly shade in those really dark areas just so I can differentiate which areas are dark and which are lighter. 
as I'm breaking it down into shapes around the eye. So you can see how delicate I'm being with every single pencil stroke, keeping it super, super light pressured. I'm lightly filling in like the pupil in the middle of the eye. Even though it's really dark, it's hard to tell where it is and where the kind of iris starts and where the pupil is, but just sort of making that middle bit a little bit darker. And also that inner corner. And then I'm lightly just mapping out the edge of that black fur where it kind of meets the lighter fur by the side of the eye. When it comes to black fur, a lot of people, you know, shy away from it. They don't like drawing it. It's not their favourite. And same with white fur on white paper as well. Um, they're not the easiest. I think both of them have a lot of like subtle colours in there that you might not necessarily think that you will need to use. I think the more that you kind of pull them out and add in those subtle colours, it really just helps to kind of bring it to life and capture that light in. When light is shining on black fur, it tends to like illuminate different parts and makes parts look more blue, more purple, more brown. So I think including all of those colours in like a subtle way really does help to, you know, make it not look flat. If you go straight in with a black and like just use cold greys, then you do risk it looking flat, which we don't want. So yeah, I've started off with the dark sepia. It's, you know, a really, really dark brown colour. So my pencil now has started to flatten out on one side. So when I'm just filling in this fur area around the eye, that's the side that you want to keep on using just so we get a much softer line to shade in with.
And look at the direction of the fur as well and how it's sort of merging into that lighter fur. Look at the way that it's kind of flicking. And you want to kind of replicate that with your pencil stroke. So flick into that lighter furred area in the same direction. So I'm just going to shade up to like this section. I think we'll carry on with like the top half of the face for the next part. Um, just because I'm conscious that I don't want all these parts to be about 10 hours long each <laughs> because I always get carried away. Um, but yeah, so I'll try and keep it a little bit shorter and we're just going to focus on the eyes and that fur directly around the eyes, like the dark fur. So whilst I've still got this dark sepia in my hand, I'm going to do the exact same, but on the other side. So notice that one side of my pencil, if you can just about see that, is really, really sharp and pointy and the other side is flat. So I'm just, just keep turning your pencil round, um, depending on what kind of line you need. So for when I'm working in and around the eye, just kind of mapping out the outline um, and working around those, you know, light reflections, you want to use the pointy side so you can be more accurate with where you put in that line. If ever you've kind of lost some of those initial outlines underneath, use like symmetry. So imagine that there's a line in the middle and kind of do the opposite of what you can see on the uh, right hand side, kind of reflect the same sort of shapes.
So I've twisted my pencil so I'm working on the flatter side again, just to start filling in where this fur is. You want to lightly fill in what you can see of the iris. I know that the pupil and the iris just sort of blend together because they're so the eyes in general are so dark. Difficult to kind of differentiate them. I'm always really delicate with eyes anyway, but even more so on this paper, just because it, it literally picks up every single mark that you make like really easily.
So everything's mapped out now. So we want to build up that tonal value, add some subtle colours in there to make that black fur look realistic and continue to build up that detail in the eyes as well. So the next colour that I'm going to go in with is the dark indigo, which is actually a really dark blue. And I think you mainly just want to use this in the shadowy areas of the fur. Just to add like a really subtle blue tint in there. Um, with it being a dark blue, it'll just blend with like all the blacks and the dark colours that we add on top. But it will tint it a nice blue colour from like underneath. So it'll act as an undertone really. Just going to add a little bit around those highlighted reflections. I think within eyes there's always an element of blue in there, especially if the animal's being photographed outside because obviously we've got like the blue sky reflecting back into the eye. But even so, when they're quite dark anyway, I think they always just have a little bit of blue in there. So I'm just adding a bit around them, around those highlights.
Next up, I'm going to go in with a luminance pencil. This is the shade Silver Grace, which is a nice, like, icy white um, sort of colour, but also has a tint of blue in it. So I'm going to work into the eyelids and, like, basically these curved shapes around the eye. I want to add a really light layer as well. Like that. I'm also going to go in with the warm grey 4 and just add a little bit again to these shapes just around the eyes, these curved eyelids and underneath as well. Now this is more of like a brownie grey rather than a, a bluey grey. I think it's important with both white fur and black fur to have a mixture of both of them to um, make it look realistic. If you add too much of one and not enough of the other, it can end up looking quite flat. So yeah, mixture of cold greys and warm greys is always a good go-to. You might notice it looks a little bit grainy in some areas as well. Now that's not actually the drafting film it's because it's picking up the texture of the fabriano paper from underneath but that will very very quickly smooth out with literally a few more layers with drafting film you are limited to the amount of layers that you can add so you kind of need to choose the colors that you use a little bit more um carefully kind of go in with what you can see rather than thinking of building up right from the start if that makes sense um, just because it doesn't allow for as many layers as, say, Fabriano does. Simply because it's got no teeth, so it's got no, like, grain to kind of grip onto that pigment. Next up, I'm going to use the Payne's Grey Polychromo, making sure it's really sharp. And you want to start going over everything in and around the eyes and those darkest parts to start adding a bit of definition and building up that contrast slowly. Again, I'm not applying a harder pressure. Um, you know, it'll just naturally get darker the more layers we add. But like I said, we are limited to the amount of layers, but it doesn't mean that you need to press on harder. You never really need a hard pressure on drafting film. Um, it just naturally starts to smooth out. And it blends really easily as well on this paper because you're not kind of working that pigment into any kind of tooth or any kind of grain. Everything's just sort of laid on top. It's so smooth. So in terms of blending, it blends really nicely. You don't have to kind of try too hard for it to blend together with those pigments underneath.
On drafting film, you can literally draw in every single tiny fine hair. It picks up every single detail, um, which I love because I love drawing realistically. So you can see how the grain from the paper underneath that it's picking up is um, starting to reduce with this pencil. Like the more layers that we add, the more that grain is kind of disappearing. If we compare the right side to the left side. You want to do the same to the left hand side of the face and around the eye. Start building up that fur and that kind of darkness in the eye as well, adding a bit of definition.
I'm not chatting as much now because I'm concentrating so much with drafting film because you've got to be so delicate with everything. Um, concentration levels are literally through the roof. So that's why I'm not chatting. But um, I actually got some new filming equipment for my studio, which arrived, well, one of them arrived yesterday. One's just arrived this morning. So I'm currently filming this using my new tripod. It basically clamps to my desk um, and I can like move it around. It's just a lot easier than my ring light tripod that I had before that kind of went at the side of me, but I had to keep bashing into it and it just wasn't the best. Um, and also it's broken now as well. So I just I definitely needed something new and a bit sturdier. Um, and then this morning, some new studio lights arrived. So I've ordered like, not a massive one, but a small-ish like LED soft box. Um, basically what like photographers use when they're doing like a shoot, but on a much, much smaller scale version. So yeah, I'm going to put that on the left hand side of my desk and hopefully every tutorial from the next one and onwards is going to be super bright and like good quality so you can really see what I'm doing. At the minute I've got just a smaller light but it's not the brightest and because I work on a drawing board at like an angled surface and I'm also facing the window, um, the lighting isn't always the best and it keeps sort of fluctuating as well. So yeah, I'm excited to kind of set that up and see how that looks in my studio after this tutorial, after I've finished filming. Um, been after like a light box for quite a while, but it's just knowing which one to get. And I've seen that a few artists have recommended this one and it's not like too big, which is what I needed because my studio isn't like the biggest. Um, so yeah, we'll see, see how it looks. In the next tutorial when I use it. So the good news with drafting film is as well that if you ever need to erase anything then it comes off really easily 
And also the craft knife slice tool works like insanely well on this paper as well. Um, so I'm just looking at this little bit of lighter fur underneath each of the eyes. I want them to be in line and I think I've done this one too far up. So I just want to bring it down a little bit. So I'm going to go in with the ultra fine Tombow Mono Zero Elastoma Eraser. <laughs> That's a proper mouthful, but it's basically got a tiny little rubber on the end. So you can be really accurate with the pigment that you're kind of lifting off. And just with a light pressure, you just want to work into the area that you want to kind of brighten or like lighten up a little bit. And it'll just start to remove that pigment. Just going to bring it down so both of them are kind of in line at the bottom. Yeah, so I think that looks a lot better. For those lighter parts in the fur that aren't as, as bright as the ones underneath the eyes, but like these bits coming down either side of the face and like above the eye a little bit, I'm gonna go in with the cold gray five and just work into those areas to dull them down slightly. I'm going to work into this eyelid a little bit. Also this little bit underneath the eye. I want to elongate some of those hairs along the edge of the black fur so it starts to look like it's merging into that white fur. Obviously that will become more obvious and realistic once we have actually drawn in that white fur. Um, but for now I'm just going to leave it 
like this with a, like a few elongated hairs going along that edge. It just helps us to see the direction as well as it starts to merge into that fur. So next up, I'm going to go in with the black and start really defining everything, especially in those eyes. We want, you know, the pupil and around the eyes to be really quite dark. So we've got that contrast and depth to them. And again, just because you want to make it darker doesn't mean you need to apply a harder pressure. Just apply like a light to medium pressured layer or two just to darken it or intensify that pigment. You never need to apply a hard pressure with this paper, which is a good thing because your hand never aches. <laughs> That's a positive. With Fabriano paper, because it's got, you know, a really fine tooth, it can hold like so many layers. So you really need to work that pigment into the paper, which definitely aches your hand after a while. Um, I feel like someone's chainsawing outside. I don't know what's going on. I feel like this always happens every time I sit down to record. Someone's always like chopping something down or mowing the lawn or something outside, making a racket. So if you can hear that, then yeah, that's what it is, I think. Someone's um, chopping a tree down.
Gonna do the same to the left hand side. Kind of looks like he's got a little mask on at the minute because I've just stopped it kind of halfway up. Really look at the direction of the fur as it goes round the eye, kind of going in all sorts of different directions really and very quickly goes like up vertical.
you want to darken that pupil in the eye or just like the center because we can't really see it to be honest but just darken the middle just underneath those highlights You also want to darken the inner corner and like leave a bit of a gap just above it before it kind of merges into that iris. Also going to darken that curved line underneath the eye as well. So that's added a bit of definition to the eyes and really increased that shadow and like dark pigment. Looking a lot more intense now. Next up I'm going to use the Indanthrene Blue which is slightly lighter than that dark indigo that we used before. A little bit more of like a brighter blue but you still want to keep that colour quite subtle by applying a super light pressure. Just let it brush across the surface and I'm adding this kind of in and around the eyes and like to any parts of the fur that have a slight blue tint to it. Just to focus on the actual eyes for a minute, to finish off the iris, I'm going to start off by going in with the shade Walnut Brown. So you want to fill in the entirety of the iris on each eye. I always find if you shade like towards the middle as you're going all the way around, it just helps to create that spherical effect of like the eyeball. But obviously this one's quite dark, so it's difficult to see that anyway. But just wanted to get like a brighter, like chocolatey brown in there before we go in with some darker colours, just so, um, you know, just so it's kind of tinting it a brown colour from underneath so it doesn't all look completely black. We want a little bit of brown in there.
like that. So I filled in the iris and kind of merged it with the edges of that pupil in the middle. You then want to use your dark sepia just to darken the edges of that eyeball. And just make it really dark brown in some areas. Kind of dull down that walnut brown a little bit. And then you can go back in with your black as well, just to go over that pupil in the middle. Also, just go around the edges if you need to, just to make them a bit darker. So for those highlighted reflections in the eyes, I'm actually going to go in with the Prussian Blue, I think that's how you say it, um, which again is an even lighter shade of blue, a little bit more vibrant. I'm just going to add a tiny little bit just to the top of those highlights. Like that, and maybe just a touch underneath the right eye tiny little bit on the left eye as well like that I'm just going to add a little bit more of that cold grey five just to help bring everything together a little bit more elongating some of that fur flicking up in the direction that it's flowing Next up I'm going to go in with the warm grey 4 again just to keep that balance between the cooler tones and the warmer tones. You want to work into the brightest parts of the fur like these two sections underneath the eye and part of the eyelid.
So that's just dimmed some of those lighter sections in the fur. And I also want to add a bit of like a purpley tint in there as well. So also in the areas that we've just added that warm grey for, I'm going to go over the top of that with the violet grey luminance pencil. This is a really like subtle lilac-y colour, so perfect just for getting some subtle purple tints into that black fur. You'll find that it feels quite a lot different working with luminance pencils on drafting film in comparison with other papers um, because they're quite like a thick, soft, like waxy um, pencil. They feel quite thick to work with on drafting film. It doesn't kind of grip onto the pigment as well as it does on other papers, but it still layers quite well and helps to blend. So something like that. If you wanted to be really adventurous and <laughs> bring out more of those purpley tones, then you could go in with a manganese violet, which is really vibrant. But again, if you just use it in a really subtle way by just letting it brush across the surface of the paper, then it'll kind of enhance the colors in that fur rather than be like too overpowering. Because we've we're kind of layering it over the top of a lot of dark colours anyway. It's not actually going to show up as bright as it as it looks on the pencil. But yeah, still keep your pressure quite light so we don't risk adding too much. So something like that. I'm going to also add the dark sepia again, just add a little bit into that fur so we keep some of those brown tones in there. And this is where, when you're kind of at this stage where everything's looking really smooth and you feel like it's not taking many more layers, then this is where you can start focusing on that darker detail. So really draw in those fine kind of darker lines and have some of them, you know, standing out a little bit to start building up that fur texture. And badges have really fluffy fur, obviously. It's, the fur is very dense, it's very thick. Um, so yeah, spend some time just building up that dark fur textured detail. So on top of that, just to keep those dark areas really intense, I'm going to go back in with the black, just make sure 
we've got that clear contrast and those darkest areas are really sort of black and intense, especially like around and in the eye. So at this point we've added all the dark details that we can and we want to pull out some of those highlights and start adding in those lighter details in the fur and in the eyes. So I'm going to start by going in with the silver grey that we used just before and just brighten up those eyelids by kind of working into the middle of them where the light's kind of hitting them. A little bit just above. And then also underneath the eye as well. Just a little bit at the side and also above that left eye. like that and then you want to go in with your craft knife slice tool this is literally a game changer in terms of realism especially on drafting film it just works so so well it lifts that pigment off the paper so easily because it can literally just slide off because there's no tooth because it's completely smooth so i think firstly i'm going to focus on those highlights in the eyes
This is where you can use like the pointy part of the ceramic blade as well to get that really intricate detail in there. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of tiny like texture dots and little marks just on the eyelid. And then you want to do the same underneath. I'm just going to add a strip of highlight kind of following around that arch and then the same to the right eye. And then some little dots and marks just underneath it. You then want to start working into the fur. So kind of elongate some of these lighter tufts of fur we've got all the way up. And flick them into that black fur. And again, this is going to help it to like merge together. going to add these little light at tops just above the eye as well. So hopefully you can see and feel how amazingly well it works on drafting film. It just like glides across the surface. So for these other hairs kind of on the outer edges of the black fur, I'm going to do some flicking back in towards the black fur but the other way around so like these were flicking that way I'm going to do these flicking inwards you don't want them all going perfectly you know parallel perfectly the same way because it doesn't look natural so have some sort of going in slightly different directions but on the whole they're all sort of pointing down and vertical
and then I'm going to do the same for the left hand side. This lighter bit of fur just above the eye, you want to do some subtle hairs kind of flicking out of that section. And you also want to do some below the eye kind of curving up towards it as well, up towards that dark sort of curved section. Now all these lines I'm making are so fine, but if you spend time just, you know, adding all of those in, it really adds to that realistic element. So it's definitely worth doing. adding that texture in there, kind of over the top of all that tonal value we've built up. those highlights in the eyes I also like to use the fine nib white uni ball Posca pen this is really well used I've had this for like two years and um, that's why it's so worn out but basically just to intensify those highlighted details in the eyes and to really make those eyes pop I just like to like lightly dot in those most intense part of the highlight reflections and it'll just really intensify that white like that basically like a paint pen it's, it goes on like a wet medium but then it dries if you add too much you can literally just smudge it away with your finger or you can wait for it to dry and like crumble away at it with a pencil so um yeah that's the white uniball posca pen really really good one for like highlights in eyes and highlights on the nose and stuff like that. So the final step for the black fur is to go in with the white Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarel pencil. This is literally my favourite white pencil ever for showing up over multiple layers, especially dark pigments. It still shows up really well. It's probably the most pigmented white pencil that I've used. It's definitely my favourite. Um, and you want to work into some of these areas that we've sort of etched away with the craft knife slice tool just to brighten them up slightly like in the fur and some of these little elongated hairs coming from that white fur.
So next up we want to focus on that pale bit of fur in between the eyes and kind of getting it to merge nicely with that surrounding black fur. Again, I'm just going to draw like up to where we've gone with the black fur as well. So we're not doing the whole thing and getting carried away. So this won't require anywhere near as many layers as we added for the black fur. Um, and we've already got a slight little beige tint underneath from that pan pastel. So I'm going to go in first with the warm grey one, which is a really pale neutral colour. And you basically just want to work into where we can see that like beige sort of colour. So kind of like the edges where it meets the black fur and maybe slightly sort of in the middle as well. So the fur is quite thick in this section, we can see because all of those tufts are really close together. So there's not a lot of detail. And to be honest, there's not a lot of tonal value either. So you just want to use the flat side of your pencil and basically just very softly and gradually just build up a tiny little bit of shadow and detail, like basically just anything that you can see. It's made up of loads of like neutral sort of medium shaded lines. Uh, kind of going up the head but just as a bit of a base I'm going in with this warm grey one first. I think with white fur in general you always want to go slightly darker than you might think and then you can always kind of bring it back with either a rubber or the craft knife slice tool. When you're focusing just on this pale strip in the middle of the face, it kind of gives you a bit of a different perspective. Um, so I can see now a lot clearer that this section of the black fur just needs to come in a little bit slightly. So I'm just going to, with the black, just work around some of those lighter tufts and just kind of bring it in a little bit. And then if those um, paler like white tufts of fur are a bit too long, you can just go over the tips of them 
just to again kind of bring that back a little bit. So all about tweaking really at this stage. Like that. Also within white fur, there's always like an element of colour, but it's usually very subtle. Um, so for example, this is probably the brightest part of the portrait. The light source is hitting the badger like from the top or from the right hand side. So this bit and this bit on the right are very, very bright. There's not loads of colour that we can see, but I would say it's slightly cream and that it's got a slight off-white tint to it. So for that, I'm going to go in with the Buff Titanium Luminance Pencil, which is a really pale, like, yellowy cream colour. And basically, you just want to work over that warm grey one that we added before. And just apply it with a light pressure, keeping it really subtle. You can almost drag or smudge some of that dark pigment into the lighter parts of the fur. You can see how well it moves across this surface and how gradual that is. Next up, I'm going to go in with one shade darker, the Warm Grey 2. And again, just start to build up a little bit more of those subtle shadows in the white fur. And you can also start to build up those darker lines as well, just to start bringing in that detail, even though there's not that much of it.
Then you want to go in with a shade darker again, the warm grey 3. And this is where you can really start focusing on those like darker little details and lines in and amongst that white fur. Start giving it a little bit of texture. Imagine that there's like a straight vertical line down the center of the white fur. And then on either side, it kind of tilts slightly to the left. Then on the other side, it's tilts slightly to the right. Um, so in terms of like your lines and those textured details like this, that's what you want to kind of draw in. Really look at the direction of the fur and how subtle it changes. I'm also going to use a tiny bit of the silver grey to get some cooler tones in there. like that. So I'm just going to finish off by going in with the cold grey 5 again and adding this 
into those darkest lines. Have some of the lines a little bit softer by using the flatter side of your pencil and have some of them a little bit finer by using the pointy side. So I think I'm going to leave that there for part two. As we progress through the rest of the fur, we can always come back and, you know, add little bits or tweak areas. Um, but yeah, I think I'm happy with how that's looking for now. So I hope you've enjoyed the second part of this tutorial. I know it's been quite a lot longer than the first part, but um, as you can tell, we're really focusing on that detail when it comes to drafting film and we're starting to you know, build on our coloured pencil techniques as well. As with the previous part, I've left the line drawing the full materials list, including all the colours used in the right order um, and the reference photo in the video description so you can follow through from the start. If you've, got, if you've got any questions, then just comment below and I'll answer you when I can. And yeah, I'll be back shortly with the next part of this tutorial.